before I bring Xander on. Purple people eaters. Doomsday. Gang Green. The legendary Steel Curtain. And now, the architect of the no holes defense who gave up an astonishing 455 yards in total offense to the shitty Bucks, Ladies and gentlemen, the co-host of Birds 365, the host of the pre- and post-game show here on Jacob, Xander, Bednarik, Krauss. Make sales. What's up? Brother? <laughs> uh, I got to take my beating today on that one, brother. That that defense looks like anything but the no holes defense, brother. Let's get the Swiss cheese T-shirts made, uh, or a sponge of some or something that shows they got holes everywhere. Xander, isn't it more about just being disappointed in the effort oh, it was that brutal, they put so. out there in that game on Sunday? You're right. It's brutal. I mean, it was it was brutal the way they got off. They didn't get off the bus, and we talked about it a little bit on the post game show. You know, it was embarrassing. You're an Eagles fan. You 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 spent a lot of time rooting for this team. You put resources, money, time, effort to root for this team, and they don't even get off the fucking bus. We had like eight dudes in our Bird 365 chat that were at the game. I'm like, you sat in 95 degree weather, and your team decided to take the week off early before their bye week. They were already on the bye week. It was a joke. It was embarrassing to watch. Uh, this team's got big problems, you know, and every time they win, we're probably going to go through this same process of we all talk ourselves in and I'm, I'm guilty of it too. I'm an Eagle fan. I'm guilty of it. We talk ourselves into buying back into the team and they're going to be great. And they got this and that. And the, these problems are too, are big, are, are much bigger uh, than a loss to the Tampa Bay Bucks at Sunday at one on a random Sunday in September at one o'clock are leading on this team's got big issues uh, and I'm not sure if they're going to fix them. By the, or you know, by the way, your your open was a masterclass. I mean, it really it really was. And and the more time that goes on, I think more people are seeing. You know, I said this morning, Sills, about you, and I'm like, it's almost like Cilio had the summary to the book. He read the cliff notes to this book three two years ago, and we're all reading it one page at a time. And they got us on the cliffhanger. Meanwhile, Cilio told us the summary. To, you know two years ago and told us what to expect. It's like you had the chat GPT uh, of this, how this thing was going to turn out. And, you know, it's a credit to you, but like you said, you don't want to be right. I mean, this no. fucking stinks. No, no, you know? no. And, but and, here, there were, there were too many, there were too many telltale signs that this was going to go this way. I'll tell you why. After watching how they dealt with Hurt or Wentz and what they're doing now and how they're coaching them and all the inconsistent coordinators that Jalen has had and the change in direction of what he does and what he doesn't do well, it just went down the same path. And even Angelo said last hour, they're, they're basically, it looks like a carbon copy of how the whole thing ended with Wentz. I mean, you know, to give Jalen the opportunity to develop Xander is almost impossible. And you get this, that I think that they were going to have a superstar game offensively because of all the missing pieces? No. But what bugged me was the effort, the stupid, like, the, the fumble again, the um, the missing of Barkley, the offensive coordinator looking like Brian – Keller Moore looked like Brian Johnson last year. That offense looked like 2023, and he didn't wasn't creative on trying to get guys open, or was it the coordinator did get them open and the quarterback missed them? I just – I was disappointed. I'll get to the defense here in a minute. But this being all said, how concerned now are you about Jalen Hurts? And are you still riding with the quarterback? Uh, I mean, look, you got here. Here's why I'm riding with him, Sills. And I'll tell you why. And I'll get into all the issues I have and, and, the, and the questions I have and the fair uh, criticism that he's taken, especially on the Jacob channels where I'm mostly focused uh, right now. I'm riding with him because we got no choice. This team, Howie Roseman could be fired, which would never happen. He could be fired. Nick could be fired. Kellen could be fired. A.J. Brown could get traded. Uh, Hassan Reddick could be brought back. The only thing that's guaranteed 
is that Jalen Hurts is going to be the starting quarterback of this team, not only this year, but next year, and potentially even the year after that. You're talking about a $120 million cap hit. So for anybody that wants to think that Jalen Hurts, you might not like him, which is which is fine. Because and as an Eagle fan, you want to win and you might not see it with him. And, that, and that's perfectly fine. I'm not criticizing that opinion. But he's going to be our quarterback. Next he's 51 gonna, games. We had, Bob Brown, we had Bob Brown on last night. Bob Brown was fantastic. Hey, post, post 51 season. games. The next 51 games, um, Jalen Hurts is going to be your starting quarterback. That's what I'm saying. And Bob Brown was on last night. And he's like – and he's he echoed a lot of what you said where why, why do, does a guy play like he does in 22? He dominates the league, earns a contract, comes on the brink of winning a Super Bowl. Then they they reward him with a bag of money, and then they completely try and change who he is. It, it doesn't make sense. It does. Now, I, there, there's a pushback to that where would the league have caught up to the RPO? Probably, right? The, re the reason why I would push back on that is because the one thing Hurts that does on the RPO that's better than anyone else, he's a better passer. I mean, I I will say this to you. He's but he's you know, a he's good at passing. Here's what here's where Jalen's good at passing. He's good at passing when his first read is open. But he's not okay, that good of a that passer. Creates when you get the legs. Yeah, I know, but 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 if you're talking about yeah, I guess you're right. You're saying See, in, in 22, in 22, they were wide open. Why? So you, you're, essentially, you're you're assuming he would be able to run yeah. like he did in that year. Yes. Now, did, did you see the video on social media floating around of his 2022 or 2020 highlights in 21? They're probably insane. Dude, dude, dude it's not the same guy. And it's not a knock it's on Jalen It's not Hurst. the same guy. The NFL takes a toll on your body. You cannot be an athletic quarterback like that and have it your whole career. I don't even but know if they you don't can do coach that right him now. Or play him like that. I know they don't, but you know, I don't know. I think remember we're, what I think you and I said. I'll take six to nine years of Jalen Hurts playing that style versus fourteen six years. Six to of nine, this. way too lofty, dude. Way too lofty. Okay. Hey, I'll tell you what. If Jalen Hurts would have won two Super Bowls, three Super Bowls in six years or five years, yeah, and he gets blown happening. up, I don't care. I I hear you, and I don't think he would either. But not happening, you know, because all, I don't know if. I mean, even when they run the read option now, I know it's a lot different. It's not the same offense, but every time the guy makes the wrong decision now. It seemed like in 22, every decision he made was the right one. It was almost like the magic of Jalen Hurts that year. Even at time, even you, the biggest criticizer of him before it was popular to criticize him at times of that season, were like, just go football. I don't know. I, 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 I can't, can't defend him. That. He's just playing good. Yeah, you, you know? can't defend him. You and that can't. magic is gone, Sills. That magic doesn't exist anymore. You know what the one coordinator that he's had in Philadelphia did for him versus the other coordinators? Shane Steichen took the pure quarterback progression reading out of the offense, and that's why he succeeded. They're putting that in now, and Jalen Hurts is below average as a quarterback. Since 2023, Justin Fields has – more effective numbers, and he's got a better QBR. And Jim, um, Baker Mayfield is outplaying him since 2023. Dude, those are the quarterbacks he's in the conversation with. That's not elite status now, dude. Dude, it, Dan, I, 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 elite is too far. Like, I'm not even ready to talk. Right, how about good? How about good? Like, we talk about Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy gets so much shit from Eagles fans, and I get it. I, I get it, but that dude is slicing and dicing right now without key players. Now, he got a couple guys back this week, I know. But Kittle came back, yeah. two, two weeks ago, he had no Kittle, no Debo, no McCaffrey. I was told that whole team was those dude. The dude had three touchdowns in the air and 350 passing yards and no interceptions. And we don't even want to, we don't even want to consider him as elite. We barely want to consider him as good. So at what point are we having I think he's a great quarterback. Him? I'm, I'm I'm sold. Purdy's great, and I said that a couple weeks ago. I'm about sold. Me. Upset with me. Look, I know they're a rival, but I watch a lot of football. I, I like I enjoy good football. Um, Brock Purdy's a great player. Jalen, I don't I don't think Jalen Hurts is even his in his league at, right now. Based on what has Jalen has done this year, he's not in that conversation. He's not even in the Purdy conversation. He's not in the Mayfield. Mayfield's outplayed him. Well, Mayfield's right. I think right there with the Purdy conversation right now. Both of those two yeah. guys are are playing. You know. Upper echelon, great ball. 
Not elite, but great football. Hertz has lost 10 of the last 13 games. Oh, my goodness, man. It, you, look, these not the winning these is stats. no longer the winning, winning is no longer the hook to hang the hat on anymore. No, well, it's just well, not. winning is one of those stats that everybody uses when it works for them and they, they discard it when it doesn't work for them. You know, wins are not a quarterback stat. And ju when, just like I'll say that they're not for J the losses aren't all on Jalen either. Right. Wins, winning and lost, winning and losing is not no, a quarterback I'm just metric. about his play. Yeah, well, I, I but I'm saying people use that in their yes, argument yeah, as to analyze yeah, the quarterback. Yeah. Oh, he's you know he's yeah. whatever he is 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 right. I know he's great. I mean, the record's great. The team is great. The, the, but the, no, Jaden Daniels is, is out great. playing Jalen Hurts. Jaden Daniels that look that looks last two weeks it's been insane. far above Jalen Hurts. Looks right now he looks far above Jalen Hurts. So, uh, yeah, no, it, it's a it's a problem, man. I mean. Like I said, and I'm an Eagle fan. What do you, what do you want me? What do you want me to do? You want to sit no, 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 no. The next two years are fucked. What's his it? What's his inner? You know, when Sirianni was asked about the fumble in the pocket, how come this organization has a tough time criticizing the quarterback for saying he's got to protect the football and be better at it? Why can't they do that? Why does it come up with, hey, we got to coach better, we got to do this better? It's funny. I watched the sack on Baker Mayfield in that same game. Brady goes like this. That's how you protect the football, right there. He goes, how he kept that football was unbelievable. Yeah. But that's a quarterback's responsibility when you're going to sit in the pocket like that. You know the difference that I see with Baker Mayfield in Tampa versus uh, Baker Mayfield in Cleveland? He's got more courage in the pocket. Well, he, he well that's what how he, he made his stays in that Even back to his Heisman season, he had to sling the ball as an undersized dude. He could never rely on the athleticism. But I thought he ran out of the pocket too much in Cleveland. Baker Mayfield, what what a story that is, man. That guy looks – he looks really good. I mean, got to give him credit. I, I like a story like that where a guy bounces back, it's thrown around the league a bunch of times, and now he looks good, you know, settled in. But obviously it sucks that they just beat us. And, you know, you're right. People are picking on you about Josh Allen. I'm like, okay, are we really going to go there right no, now? No, it, it, our, guy can't, our guy has seven turnovers in four games. He's, leading the, he's second to Will Levis. Second in the league right now in turnovers to Will Levis. That's the conversation we're in. And people want to talk about Josh Allen? Come hey, on, guys. how about this? People are actually online trying to compare J uh, Patrick Mahomes to Jalen Hurts. Mahomes is 4-0. He's Dude, fighting for his third straight championship. And the, and the team is – get this. The difference between their team and the Kansas City Chiefs, the Chiefs are struggling and they're undefeated. Where's my man Twiz? Let's go to my man Twiz real quick. Twiz I mean, says we're 2-2. Two two. People are panicking for what reinforcements You're the are worst 2-2 two two team in the league. Well, Twiz, and I hear you because, and this is where I'm at. Like, you're going to get some of these guys back. You're going to start winning some games with AJ Devante out there, but that means everything's going to have to be perfect in order for us to win. And and the the the, the roster is going to change in the next couple of years because the cap hits are going to start to kick in. You know, people are going to need new contracts. It, that's how it works. I mean, even just from 22, look how different our defensive roster is, and it sucks. Jonathan Gannon, the, every, every day that passes, Jonathan Gannon looks better. He got 70 sacks with this fucking defensive scheme. That's unbelievable. Now he had great he had players playing well, but and depth. You know, and depth. But yeah, we're in a tough spot right now as as, a, as an organization. And and I'm starting to wonder how much of this, you know, is really on the guys ahead. Like everybody keeps ripping Nick, and I get it. You know, Angela's ripping Nick too. Start part of me is starting to wonder, is Jalen Hurts holding the coaches back? Because and I'm not – don't even take it like hate, but I'm just – No, no, no. Like, I think that's, know, that's a good angle. Ever since Shane's been gone, it's been a, another revolving door. For Nick Couldn't call plays with Nick. Couldn't handle Brian Johnson. Now Kellen Moore looks pedestrian as hell. You know, I, is it Jalen? And, and by the way, that's if, you fair, at, if you break down the film of, of, Kel, of the offense this year for the Eagles early in the year, four games, it looks nothing like – Kellen Moore's offense. Nothing. It doesn't look – it looks like Nick Sirianni's offense with motion. It looks like 23. But it, uh, All right, so the easy thing to do there is say Nick Sirianni's still involved. Is Nick still involved or is yep. that the limitations of the quarterback? No, remember what they said. It's a collaborative effort putting the game plan together. Yeah, but I, my point is that people are still looking like Nick's got to get out of there so Kellen can yep. unleash the beast. I don't think you can unleash the beast. I don't think Jalen is capable of moving into a more pro style, different style oh, of offense. And that's why I talked about Bob. Bob's like, why do we even want to do that? Well, because I wonder if the RPO would work forever, if the league caught up to him, you know, and that's the next step for Jaden Daniels. Talk about how good he looks. The league will get some tape on him. He'll have to evolve as a quarterback like everybody does. 
um, and how good he does that will be the next question for him. But, you know, I, you tell me all the time that Jalen Hurts is who Jalen Hurts is. It do, it do, none of it surprises me because I don't expect him to be what you expect him to be. And so many times I've said, Sills is, you know, a great talker, eh, whatever. He doesn't, he's wrong. And the more that unfolds, the more I'm like, that looks more and more and more likely to be true. And that that's what brings me to the next question. Is it the offensive coordinator? Is it Nick Sirianni? Or it's the quarterback. Is, does he just – It's hit, the quarterback. You know, hinder the offense. It's possible. It's the quarterback. It's the quarterback. I saw I saw M. Reyes go like this. Mahomes couldn't win with wide receiver four and five. He wins with wide receiver four and five. Here's the difference. Why stop those quarterbacks comparing that what? guy to him? No, he's but here's the difference. Than, he's not you. You comparing? Com, I mean, Jalen even has a better O line, running back, tight as good a tight end when you when when utilized. Mahomes has nothing in the wide receiving core. Yeah, well, this is where, and this is where so many people are wrong. Like even John this morning, he's like, "Yeah, but the Eagles have you know Paris Campbell and Jahan Dotson," and I'm like. Pur- Purdy threw to Jawan Jennings. The only reason you're saying Jawan Jennings is better than those guys is because Brock Purdy elevated him. Brock Purdy got him the football. Brock Purdy put him in good position. Brock Purdy got the ball out on time and on target. Like that's why our our do our do, do does Jahan Dotson suck as bad as he looks in Philly, or does he just not have a quarterback that's elevating anybody? Well, look at the best pass to Barkley right down the middle of the seam. He had him wide first open. Play the game. From the first play of the game, he missed Barkley wide open on the side. Wide line. open. He was wide open. All right, let me let me move over. <clears throat> you brought his name up. So let me bring him up. Should Nick Sirianni be fired in the bye week? I mean, I'm gonna say no because I don't I, I agree honest, with you. I don't think I don't think it's ever but it doesn't idea. matter. I don't know if it's ever a good idea to <clears throat> fire coach after four games, you know, unless they think that they could salvage the seat because, because you can't fire the coach and then cash in the rest of the year. If you're going to fire the coach because you believe it'll position your team better to make a push in the playoffs, maybe they would think about it. I don't think they're going to, but if you're firing a coach in, in other words, saying we're gearing up for 2025, that's just a foolish thing to do. They're not doing that from a business perspective. That's stupid as well. And you understand that. So uh, they're not going to fire them, but um I don't know. What what is he? Uh, is it him? Is it Jalen? Is it Kellen? Is it is it Howie and Jeffrey? No, I think he's built the equity up, like you said, that they're they're gonna allow him to run through the tape at the end of the year here. Yeah, we'll see. I don't even know if it's equity at this point. I really don't. I don't know well, what it is. Dude, you winning record and going to the playoffs and you're yeah, but that's two. not what they care. They care about power. I get so. it, but you're t- you're not 0-4. No, I know. Yeah. So you're right. I mean, look, they're not gonna I don't think they're gonna fire him now. I never would have projected they would fire him now but i think they'll move on from him after the year and i thought your point about doug peterson was spot on too you know that makes it a whole lot easier to do um so we'll, we'll see what and i hate thinking him. like that because that's so non-football but you know how they want to be looked at they want to yeah. be looked at as the smartest person in the room and you fire doug first that's going to make that fire for howie a lot easier to go down yeah because then we had a stupid like, chat hey, earlier skills that was on the money bro and let me, I'm going to find it way back, way back early. I think it was Anthony. Yeah, this the Anthony. Anthony Amatucci. I'm not sure if you're still in here, Anthony. Thank you for the super earlier. He said, the draft picks aren't contributing. Check. Horrible contracts. Check. Huff, Jalen. I mean, it's he's right about this. You know, this is where we blind ourselves with the Howie vision and the Howie, yep. and he does all the great things, and they draft yep. the big names. And, you know, we all fall for it, and I'm guilty of it too. But when you, when you, when you get to the meat and potatoes – of the of the football team, you know, if why why does the defense suck? Because three Players. first because three first round draft picks aren't playing up aren't aren't playing up to it. The third round linebacker stinks on ice. You know, you you, you put a band aid with Zach Bond, C.J. Gardner Johnson. He sucks. That dude. I'm I'm so done with that dude. And every all the fans on 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 Twitter who are like. I, I hate the Eagles fans who don't rock with C.J. Gardner Johnson. I'm like the dude fucking stinks. He stinks. You want me to like him because he's funny on Twitter? He stinks. Every single we're four games into the year, Sills. Every single terrible. game he got he's gotten burnt. Every he's, sing, single he's game. Terrible. I'm like he's the dude terrible. stinks. Why do you want me to like him? Because he's got a personality. It's Xander. 
don't blame Vic for this. You hired him. You knew what he was. You yeah. knew what he does. If you didn't put the proper players, get this. People go like this. Why does Belichick, at the end of his time in New England, why do you think he had losing records at the end of his time the last four years? Well, he didn't have Brady. He didn't have Gronkowski. He didn't have all those superstar players, Amendola. Those guys all left. Well, guess what? When you don't have the players, any coach, Hall of Fame coaches, are not going to have a scheme. Just because I draw up the Buddy Ryan 46 defense doesn't mean I got the Jimmys and Joes to play it. you got to have those guys. So let's look at Howie. And, boy, I'll tell you one thing that I am now seeing that is something I've said for four years. Roseman is brutal on drafting defensive players. I mean, the two tackles, as you said, underperforming. Huff free agency has been a bust and will be a bust. A He's bust is an understatement. That is a, that is a colossal failure, failure to remove all your pass rushers from your foot. Dan, I said this on Birds 365 this morning. Sorry to cut you off. The best defensive lineman on this football team right now, the best defensive lineman is a 36-year-old Brandon Graham. He's better than Jalen Carter. He's better than Jordan Davis. He's better than Milton Williams, better than Josh Sweat. And better than Bryce. You know why? Because he shows up every week. Jalen Carter's like, one week I'm going to be a world beater. I'm going to be the best player in the league. The next week, I'm not going to show up. I'm not going to get off the bus. And that's oh, not scheme. That's not elite. That's, that's not elite. scheme. Right. That's that's what is that? You're See, the, Yale goes like that. Though? Yale's goes like this. Coaching matters. Really? So how can you get an effort from New Orleans out of Carter and turn around and get a dog shit performance like that? That's not fucking coaching. That's Effort. What is that, Sills? How is that just you, you have it's, the one? It's a mindset. It's yeah. a mindset that you're not prepared week in and week out to be the greatest. You don't have a championship mentality. And you know what you thought you got? You thought you got a championship mentality because of why? You recruited a championship program. Well, guess what, Xander? Not everybody on a championship program is the guys who are the engines that pull the, the rosters around. And pull College is a different game. Too, College is a way different game, too. Way different game. Way different game. Way different game. It, it, you shouldn't. You shouldn't view it like that. Um, but I could have told you. You know, that's I what mean, I love. That's where this is where what's his name will deserve. We'll, we'll we'll get credit in the long run as a college football coach. You watch Kirby Smart. He's getting all the accolades right now with a couple championships and you know great teams. His dudes show up to the NFL. Not none of them have been are prepared. prepared. None of them are prepared for NFL football. None of them. You know, and it's it's Philadelphia Bulldogs. I never want to hear that bullshit again. I really don't. I really don't. Abe, I love you. Abe, Abe sent me a beautiful T-shirt design to get made uh, with, with the with the Philly and the Bulldog, and, and I and I looked at it last night, Abe, and I almost threw my phone into the wall. Like fucking, we're, we called the Eagles the Bulldogs for these dudes, and they just decide to show up on any given day. It's it's brutal, brutal. It's it's honestly a disgrace to our team. How about this? When are they going to come to the conclusion that Nicobe Dean can't play? I hope soon. I hope really soon. You know, I mean, that's another that's another hope. You know, another hope thing that they came into the season hoping Nicobe Dean would pan out, and they put him up against stiffs in training camp, so he looked pretty good in training camp. You know. Also, I wonder if this is why Jalen Hurts had no interceptions in practice all through training camp because this defense is is brutal. Nick Reich said it. He goes, hey, <laughs> guess what? The Eagle defense was terrible. That's why they didn't have any interceptions during the camp. He goes, that just gave me an understanding that the defense wasn't good. Well, Nick's turning out that it was right, that the defense isn't. Dude, but then again, you you know, I said it the entire offseason. This thing was going to be a bottom five defense. You're hoping to get in the middle by the end of the year. But I don't see it, man. I mean – do you look at it as a Vic thing, or do you look at this as a Howie thing, or both? Could both be true? Yeah, it's 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 both in a way, but it's 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 more on the architect. It's more on Howie, and and it's also more on the organization who just refuses to go away from from this scheme. I mean, they they love it's four straight coordinators they've hired now with the scheme. Why? Why? You know what? I'll tell you, you why. why. You know who we had before that though, right? You know why they do it? He was the polar opposite of this scheme. And we won a damn Super Bowl. Jim Schwartz. I know. But do you know why 
they keep the scheme, it's easier for Howie to plug and play. But it's not. I know. <laughs> it might be. But he thinks it. He thinks it is. Well, because you can you can mask your deficiencies. Uh, but eventually, you know, when push comes to shove, you need good players on the team. And we don't, you know, and the defense is a problem, but it's not that that we haven't invested. We have three first round draft picks on that defensive line. He's missed. He's missed. He's missed brutally in a big way. Milton Williams it might be the only one that that's worth a damn. You know what? I'm 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 still going to hold out hope on Jalen Carter. Well, I, I am, Jay, I am Jaylen, not because no, Jalen Carter is a different conversation. Jalen Carter, nobody questions Jalen Carter's talent. He he last week he got tired and everybody told he's him he's got to bring it every week. He said, I'm gonna show up this week and, and destroy the league. This week he said, Oh, everybody knows I'm good again. So let me just take the day off. It's hot. It's hot in Tampa. It's okay. I'll collect my game check. I mean, really? That's Dude, I don't care how good you are. I really nope. don't. Because if you're gonna sh- if if I have a guy that I wake up, let's just say it's Super Bowl Sunday one year. And you have to go into that game and you have to say, oh, well, I hope he decides to play today. If he plays today, we'll be in great shape. If he doesn't, though, our defense is going to fall off a cliff. Why? Do you, who wants a guy like that? Give me the dude with a little bit lesser talent who shows up every single Sunday, who gives 100% effort every single play, and leaves it all on the football field. That's Brandon Graham right now. Brandon Graham does that every single week, week in and week out. Everybody who told me he was a wasted roster spot can F right off. And, and eat that crow. We'll all be eating a lot of crow this year on this football team. That's a reality. But if you told me that Brandon Graham was a waste of roster spot, you got to eat some crow on that. He's the only dude worth worth a shit on that defense that's showing up week in and week out right now. A couple last ones here for you. Dude, you know, on top of the whole embarrassing game plan effort, how in the world does Darius Slay – come out with a tweet to put himself over here and then make sure that everyone knows that this is not on me, but this is on those guys. We sucked. They sucked. I didn't suck. They sucked. And that guy's a captain on your fucking football team. I mean, that is a prime example of what is wrong with the lack of accountability that's on your football team. It's a sign of the times, dude. It's such a modern mindset, isn't it? This, you know, immediately go to social media and, and boast out your fucking career stats. I don't give a shit, Darius. Like, your team just got destroyed. Destroyed by Baker Mayfield. But, and you're on Twitter? I mean, seriously, does this guy not think? Does, does there, what, what goes through his, as he's hitting publish on that tweet? What is going through his head? Oh, this will look great. My teammates are going to love this one. What a great thing to do as a captain of a team. Of a captain of a grown man, uh, captain of a bunch of grown professionals. No wonder this team has the problems they do, because those are the type of leaders you have. You know, and this isn't a knock on Jalen, but Jalen's not Jalen Hurts, that is, is not the kind of guy that combats that type of if you have a if you have a one leader that's so vocal and outspoken and um Fletcher extroverted and all these things. If you have that guy, you can mitigate some of that bullshit from leaders, but we don't have Jalen is more reserved, which is, that's just his personality, but that who's the lead. Look at the captain list. Sills. It's AJ Brown, who as awesome of a player as he is, isn't really a vocal. He's more of a subdued, you know, relaxed. And you guy. leave Devonte off and put and you leave Devontae for Jake Elliott, for a kicker. For, for a kicker. kicker. For you a leave kicker. Well, I like Jake Elliott too, Eric. You you take off Devontae Smith for a fucking kicker. I I there there it is. I mean, what? That is insane to me. Yeah. That's the mentality of the organization, though. Jake Elliott? Is. Sam Darius Slay. Sam, Cox might not have been the greatest leader of all time. He is a hell of a lot better than anybody leading on that defense right now, without outside of BJ. And I view them in the same light. You know how, hey, Sam, you know how Fletcher Cox led? He was there every weekend, and he played his ass off every single play of his career. Every play of his career to the end. By I the agree. way. And team, team, I disagree 100%. Cox wasn't the leader. I disagree full-heartedly. That, that well, Cox then you tell me what's wrong over on the other side of the football now. On defense? 
No, with the two tackles not showing up one week, oh, yeah. showing up another week. Yeah, they're they're on their own time now, dude. It's it's a Georgia powwow in the city of Philadelphia. They're driving around together. They're hanging out just like they did back in Athens. They're collecting multi million dollar paychecks. They, they don't give a shit. Sills, they don't give a fuck about blue collar workers who pay money to go in and buy beers and watch their watch your team buy their. They don't give a shit. These dudes are so out of touch with with the common fan, and, and that's why I get so pissed because yeah, you should. And be. that's why I like Angelo because Angelo says. The fans deserve it. You know, when, when reporters don't want to talk bad about the team, that's that's not bad for the reporter. That's bad for us as fans. Not nobody's holding them accountable. You know, and like I said, they don't care. I love I love what and how you're saying it and everyone in here because you know why? People always ask me, so, so you're not really a fan of the Eagles. I go, No, I'm a fan that what made the Eagles great, the fans. The fans, you can listen to you guys today. You guys get this. You guys are going to ride with your boys, but if they start fucking up, it's over. And I'll leave you with, uh, I'll ask you one last question. And I'll push back on one thing you just said. It's one thing to fuck up, but when you fuck up like that and you don't get (laughs) off the bus and you don't care and you don't even care to put up a fight for your city that you play for, that's what, I think that's what, that's what turns a fan on you. It's not, it's not struggling. It's really not. No, it's not. It's you not can, losing. You can look at many it's moments. Not it's not losing. It's not losing. It's if you show the fan base that you care as much as they care, that you're going to give it your very best no matter what, they will not turn on you. And we we won't turn on people to a fault of our own. But when you don't, when you show us you don't give a shit, yeah, that's when we check that, out quick. That is one hundred thousand. By the way, I think Jalen Hurts gives off that a little bit as well. He does, man. Yeah. I don't believe he's a leader. Yeah, I think Jalen Hurts gives off a little bit. Whether he wants to or not, and whether it's true or not, is a different conversation. But I think his natural aura and, and his personality gives that off to, 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 to people from the this outside. Is, this is now I'm starting to see why Nick Saban benched him. Well, yeah. I could have um, told you that. I was there for and it. And by the way, did you hear, Nick, what he said when Tua and he had a made it? He was like this. It just – he goes, players in the locker room know who should be the starting quarterback. And when he was talking about Tua and Hurts, he went like this. So yeah. when we put Tua in there, the players were all like, yeah, yeah. that." he said that for that Georgia-Alabama game. He went just like this. The players wanted Tua, not Hurts, to be the starting quarterback in Alabama. Yeah, you know who caught the winning touchdown that day, don't you? Devontae Smith? Yep. Freshman, Devontae Smith. Finally, how do you see this playing up after the bye? I think they're going get, to get, get a bunch of guys back. They're going to win some games, and, you know, I'll probably be drinking the Kool-Aid again like I do. But, you know, some of these problems you see, you can't unsee. You know, and I and I spoke last night out on the post-post game show. I had a bunch of people on Akbar. I see you in here, man. Your Akbar is turning into a star, Cilio. I like he is it. a star. He is born for this, Akbar. we got to get you on more, man. So thank you, Akbar. Uh, but, I, you know, I was talking last night, and I'm like, you know, I like to make opinions, and, I, and I'm an opinionated person, and it's great to go on there. But sometimes I sit and I think and I say, let me just sit back and listen to Cilio and John, who both bring up good points about different things, who've been around this game a lot longer than I have, and, and especially a guy like you who played at the highest level that, uh, that there can be. And you sit and you tell me, Xander, this is a problem. I need to just start shutting up and listening. Because you've you've been right more than you've been wrong. I mean, the amount of shit we've taken, Sills, in the last two years on this network because of some of the shit that you've said, and now it's all, now everybody's waking up. Nobody's going to give the apology tour, but you've been saying it for two years, three years. Yeah, it's, but it's, it's, and it's you know what's sad about it? It's it, it, it it's not stuff you crow about. Like like I don't want hurts to suck. No, I, I know, but, but that doesn't, you call it how you see it. You're a truthful man. You're, you know, you don't know how to lie. I, I don't. I'm not good at it. And no, I'll just, hey. I'm right there with you. Do we have any super chats? Because if we do, I'd like yeah, to. Man. Guys, gotta, please hit the like button here, too. We appreciate it. He goes all day. Oh, God. Can they restructure Hurts? Why would he? Well, unless they gave him more money up front, Nicole got more money up front, then maybe Jalen they would. Hurts but- holds all the cards. He's right. got He's no trade clause. He's got all the guaranteed money. We're stuck. 
The no Jalen trade. Hurts is the quarterback. I'm telling you, Jeffrey Lurie could sell this, sell this damn team, and Jalen Hurts will still. That's the only constant. Is I call Hurts. it. He's got a prenuptial agreement with Jeffrey. Yeah, that was Lurie. a perfect thing that you said. Yep. Quarterback one hasn't had, hasn't had a good, hasn't been good since the Renaissance. The reason we have no confidence is that Jalen Alexander Hurts is Beetlejuice. Um, he's been terrible oh, since he got back. Uh, Akbar, who's in the chat, he he uh, he came on last night. He said, "Bum juice, bum <laughs> juice." Work, Akbar, I'm working on a T-shirt. Ready? I'm working on a T-shirt for Akbar. It says "Bum juice." All right. It's got a picture of Hertz or whatever we can do that's copyright free. Akbar, every sale we make on a bum juice, I'm giving you a dollar of the profit. We sell a thousand T-shirts to Philly. Bum juice. Akbar is a star, baby. Jesus Cramony. What a train wreck. Akbar, get ready. You're going to be a star, my friend. What a train wreck. Now you have Marcus Hayes writing columns. It's time for Nick Seriani to be fired. Dude. He was great on your show, by the way. He was excellent. That was an excellent interview. Yeah. Right. To say go back least. and watch it if you guys go back because he was. And I told Angelo, Angelo's coming on Monday too because. He goes like this. I'm starting to come on every week now. So he's going to start coming on. Yeah, that's because Angelo knows how big your show is. This yeah. show is growing like like people wouldn't wouldn't believe. The, the amount of people that we're getting now that are reaching out to Jacob and, and, and talking about and, and the, the views and the metrics. I mean, your show is because people know what people go to where truth is when shit like this happens. Because they're and, not getting it in Philly. Seals, I've seen some people in our chat that have been some of your biggest haters that have that have put comments in there i can't believe i'm saying this silly has been right about this the whole time i should have stopped and listened a bit i've gotten 30 of them today <laughs> people are waking up man on this football team truth justice and the big sales way hey here 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 um I'll, let me let me end oh, this fuck big sales i gotta get through this overreaction i'm already ready i'm ready to go to bed for this overreaction monday wait a minute do you want to do this do you want to amend your 14 wins? I already amended it to 10 on week two. 10. There it is. Dude, I upped it to nine. I'm not, I'm, I'm yeah. you know, so I upped it to nine. Hey, you, haven't you learned that lesson? Been doing this for yeah. so long. No. Stick with your guns, Sills. I, I upped it to nine, man. I did. Oh, my God. I can't believe that. I thought Angelo was great today. Xander. Great stuff, my friend. I want to take a timeout. One last one here, all right? Is that cool? Because I want to tell you, I haven't taken the time out here. Yeah, you're good. You can you can rip one. We'll get out of here at 6 p.m. Everybody right. in the chat, appreciate it. Uh, so I showed off some of the T-shirt designs we're working on uh, last night. So I got some good stuff uh, Good stuff in the queue here on Jacob Sports, Big Sills. So I think you're going to like it. I think everybody in the chat's going to like it. Um, and I said earlier, and I'll tell you this, Big Sills, on the, a little bit on the air. September, it's now the last day of September today, so we'll move in October tomorrow. September was our biggest month ever on Jacob in terms of support from viewers, likes, comments, um, shares, super chats, memberships, all the things that these people do. So last year we had, you know, what, four shows. We had 10 personalities, a big post-game show, you know, that cost an arm and a leg. And, and now this is our sandbox, um, and it's working better right now uh it's a testament to you it's a testament to mcmullen and it's a testament to all the people uh in the chat so i'm, I'm really fantastic yeah, really good where we're at right now appreciate uh everybody they make it all possible so i can't absolutely xander i'll tell you what here um let's just keep it here um i'll let you go here but let's keep it here because right, i'm yeah, already at a couple minutes yeah yeah we'll get we're at 57 here it doesn't make sense i'll tell you one thing i want to say to you brother that's yeah. really great because they tried to put a knife in us yeah they did and everyone's been trying to kick us to the curb site. And guess what? Sills, what's in the dark will always come to the light, brother. Let it all play out. And it's uh, rise always... like the Phoenix, bitch. Yep. That's, That's what this right. is. Xander will catch you tomorrow morning on Birds 365. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it, Big Sills. Appreciate everybody in the chat. Thank you, guys. You guys have been great. 397 likes so far. We end up getting us to uh, 400.